charged particles in cross E and B fields. So here's a question. The figure below shows four directions of the velocity vector V of positively charged particles moving through a uniform electric field, which is into the page, and a uniform magnetic field, which points towards the right. Which direction of the velocity has the greatest magnitude of the net force? Now this is a very complicated problem. In this case, we don't have just the electrical fields or just the magnetic fields that we have been dealing with so far. So it needs another kind of force to be introduced. And that force is called the Lorentz force. So when we talk about combined electrical and magnetic fields acting on the charged particle, the total force that acts on it is the sum of the electrical and magnetic fields. For, for, and that force is called the Lorentz force. Note, Lorentz force is not a new kind of force, it is simply the sum of the electric and magnetic field that act simultaneously on the particle itself. So in fact, Lorentz force is QE plus QV cross B, where E and B act on the particle simultaneously. One place where it becomes very, very useful is where we want to do velocity spec selectors. For example, you saw that in the mass spectrometer before, where the velocities of different particles were selected. Okay? Another place where it becomes really, really effective is called the Hall effect. 1879, Edwin Hall showed that moving conducting electrons in a conductor can be deflected by a B field. Hall provide, effect provides a way to determine the sign of the charge carriers and the density of the charge carriers. So if you were to imagine this as an elongated section of a copper conductor without the presence of a magnetic field, the electrons move from the right to the left. The current direction obviously is opposite. Like that. Now, what happens if a magnetic field is turned on? Now, the electrons will start to get deflected. So, B field is inwards, so an electron will start to be deflected downwards, right? So, after a little while, there will be a charge buildup on the bottom side of this conductor. And there will be a charge deficiency at the top. Now, this effect is called a Hall effect. And that effectively sets up what we call the Hall potential, or the potential difference that is set up due to this particular kind of scenario. So we will get a high potential area, and we will get a low potential area. So negative charges go down, positive charges uh, accumulate at the top, and automatically there is going to be a potential difference between these two spots. So after a while, Hall voltage will become QVB equals QE. And a VH is set up between the two plates, the top and the bottom of the conductor. That voltage, or the Hall voltage, is going to be BI over NEL, where L is the length of the conductor, E is the charge, N is the number of electrons, B is the magnetic field, external magnetic field applied, and I is the current. Now let's do an example. A flat slab of semiconductor has thickness equals to 0.5 millimeters, width 1 centimeters, and length 30 centimeters. A current I of equals to 2 amps flows along the rim to the right. Magnetic field of 0.25 tesla is directed into the page perpendicular to the flat surface of the slab. Assume that the carriers are electrons, and there are 7 times 10 to the 24 mobile electrons per meter cubed. What is the magnitude of the Hall voltage across the slab? Which edge, top or bottom, is at the higher potential? Okay, in this case, it gives me that I have a conductor, and I can say it assumes that it is a slab conductor. So that's what it looks like, okay? And then it says that this is a semiconductor slab with thickness equals to 0.5 millimeters. I'm just going to convert it into meters. Width equals 0 0.010 meters. And length equals 0 0.3 meters. And it says that the magnetic field is 0 0.25 tesla. 
The current that flows through it is 2 amps. The number of electrons that are passing through are 24 electrons per meter cubed, right? And I have to find the Hall voltage across the slab. Now, what is it going to be? It is going to be the Hall voltage is E H times width, okay? We know V equals E D from last chapter. In this case, this D will be the width of the, the conductor itself, okay? So then we know that E will be V, V, V drift times the width. So E H is given by velocity, uh, so velocity, the drift velocity, times the magnetic field, okay? Also we know that drift velocity is given by N E W T, or area, right? So technically, W times thickness gives me area. That's what this is, dot W. So Ws get canceled. What am I left with? B I over N E T, okay? And that gives me Hall voltage. I have B, I have I, I have N, I have the charge of the electron, I have thickness, and I can plug all those values in to get Hall voltage equals to that number. Now next it asks me, which edge is at the higher potential, okay? So let's do this. It says that the current is moving towards the right. This means that the electrons will be moving towards the left. Yes? And it also says, the question tells me, that B is pointing in to the paper. So now again, using our right hand rule, V times B goes downwards. For a positive charge, my right hand rule, I, I can use the right hand rule, so it'll be V, cross B going downwards, right, for a positive charge. The force will be down, but we are talking about electrons, right? And electrons have negative charges. So that means force will be up, okay? So that means if the electrons will move upwards, it will get a net negative charge upwards, and that means there will be a deficiency of positive charges down here. So that will give me a plus here, okay? So there will be a net plus here and a net minus up here. So this means that the lower edge, the lower edge will be at higher potential.